I discovered after some reflection that I didn't much care for the film Looper. Now, the issue is admittedly asinine, and I fully confess being absolutely wrong in my opinion, against a previous rant where I exclaimed opinions weren't wrong, however stupid. The film is entertaining. I know, I just said it wasn't very good, but it is. And not. Damn it. It's a good script. The problem is that it's it's marred with logical glitches I can't forgive. Though everyone else should, and probably will, so yeah, go see Looper. Unless you're me. Stories involving time travel, though often fun, keep breaking my suspension of disbelief. Not in the development or mechanics of time travel technology, but rather in the inevitable paradoxes which frequently occur. There are several trains of thought on this subject, a few I'm willing to entertain, while others generate varying levels of aggravation. One concept involves the out-of-place traveler. If someone moves through time, it can be imagined that time would work around said traveler. A popular time travel staple uh, as it removes the possibility of paradoxes. The issue it brings up is that it assumes parallel realities also exist. Postulate. You travel back in time and by intention or accident prevent your birth. Using this train of thought, you wouldn't vanish. Rather, the timeline would, would warp around you. If you traveled back to your present, you would have no identity, no home, but would still physically exist. Circumventing personal apathy, you could instead simply prevent your younger self from traveling through time. Once again, avoiding the paradox, you would return to your present and meet an alternate you, with possible different memories and motivations. The convoluted masterpiece Primer dealt with this, this subject at length, and I recommend it as a brilliant take on time travel storytelling, although prep a pad and pencil before watching. Stephen Hawking once made a challenge to any time travelers to meet him at a specific place in time for a meeting. It never occurred. If you apply the parallel element, it's entirely possible that our time stream has no interference from time travelers despite being the source of the travelers in the first place. If your time machine was rooted at your point of origin, then by returning you would be pulled into your original time stream and nothing would appear to change. Even if you went back and talked to yourself, you wouldn't remember it upon your return because that was another reality which you created, one which you cannot interact with unless you remained in the past to see how events carried themselves out. If you had vanished per the paradox by interfering with yourself in some way, the universe would reveal its intrinsic flaw, leading to many reasonable conclusions that if time travel into the past were possible, then parallel realities would also be by consequence. The instance you declare in your story game postulation that the time traveler can be affected outside of the time stream, he or she left, all sorts of problems arise. This is dealt with heavily in Looper. If a traveler inflicts an injury on his or her younger self, the older form would suddenly discover the new scar, followed shortly by the memories of the incident. The problem with this is that the old self would also remember encountering the young self and thus should have been able to prevent the injury, unless in uh, intentional. If you prevent your younger self from traveling back in time, then you can't travel back and thus could never prevent your... Oh no, I've gone cross-eyed. One way to explain this would be to, to subscribe to determinism. There's only one time stream and everything is predetermined and unavoidable. The universe is fixed, beginning to end, and as a result, if you could travel back in time, you'd already have memories of that encounter and would still carry out the actions you remembered, even if actively trying to change them. Most films involving determinism don't include time travelers, uh, as much as premonitions, with the only good one coming to mind being Alex Proyas's knowing. The problem with solving a time travel crisis involving uh, travelers being susceptible to the changes they inflict is that the moment you prevent the traveler from moving through time in the first place, you create a paradox where the story never existed. It is entirely possible that whatever mechanic you introduce in your story game postulation could include fail-safes to allow you to do whatever you want. Perhaps the damage the traveler inflicts in the timeline, which doubles back and affects him or, him or her as well, is isolated from the effects the traveler has on those around. If you kill your younger self, you cease to exist, but the death still remains, as does everything else you did before being rendered non-existent. I don't personally like this explanation because it honestly feels a little arbitrary. These arbitrary decisions play heavily in Looper, as the rules regarding time travel remain relatively inexplicable, leaving a viewer to accept the just cause justification. Oddly, this is not my biggest issue involving Looper. I'm more bothered by the basic setup, which postulates that when time travel is discovered and quickly outlawed, those breaking the rules by using the technology will do nothing useful with it. The trailer explains that criminal syndicates send back people they want disposed of because of the difficulty in doing so in the future. Beyond the fact that this makes little sense, I kept wondering why 
they don't send victims back a trillion years and into a pool of lava. Well, maybe the device only works 30 years into the past, a fixed point, and the two timelines run parallel. Evidence in the film can lead one to that conclusion. But then why not do something useful, like invest, which was the logical basis of Primer. The two main characters get rich from simply going back a single day. But in Looper, time travel is employed so irrationally you have to accept it. It only has a device you strictly ju to justify the premise. Like the writer had an idea and made provisions and excuses for it to occur, even running counter to logic. The result is an entertaining character study where two identical versions of the same person interact with vastly different and equally flawed moral outlooks. That's praise. I only wish the story was, re was restructured so I wouldn't keep asking questions as to why the premise was presented in the way it was. Maybe me think too hard. I should have expected it. Looper was written by the same guy that gave us Brick and Last Jedi. Concluding with my own experience involving time travel storytelling, Amethyst technically forbids time travel in its canon setting. Uh, in the second book, Amethyst Faction, readers will conclude uh, the previous statement to be a lie. But it's not. A conundrum which has an explanation, but one readers may unfortunately never understand. Officially, although I don't dislike time travel stories, I prefer those where the past moves into the future rather than vice versa, though this format is rare in cinema. Inserting time travel in a game is risky, and about the only time I ever included it as a mechanic was as a ritual for Goodman Games. Uh, it was a book called A Book of Rituals. And as a denouement, I thought the telekinetic element in Looper was inapt, and one of the key plot elements of the story smelled too much like the Terminator. So that's my final word on that. Anyway, you guys, this is Chris from Deus Ex Machina. Like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later.